In Acts 17, Paul goes to three cities in one chapter. He goes to Thessalonica, he goes to Berea, and he goes to Athens. So we're going to three cities in this one video. What cities are we going to? Are we going to the city you live in? Let's go. City number one, Westminster. Shout out to all of you who live in Westminster, California. Leave a comment down below. Let us know if that's you because we talk a lot about Huntington Beach because that's the city our church is in. We talk a lot about Long Beach because that's where we want to plant a church. But today we're giving shout outs to some of the other cities because we know you live in so many different cities here in North Orange County and South LA County. So shout out to all our brothers and sisters in Westminster. I'm here at Freedom Park in front of the memorial. And I wanna to talk to you about the first city in Acts 17 that Paul goes to Thessalonica, or as it's called today, Thessaloniki. But this city has a special place in my heart because when we started our church, the very first sermon uh, that we ever did at this church and the gospel rings out, you could go listen to it on our website. That very first sermon, we looked at Acts 17 verse three, because when Paul goes into that synagogue and he's preaching the word, you know he's getting specifically to the gospel of Jesus, as it says, and I hope you got your Bible open with me here in Westminster, CA. This is Acts 17, verse three. This is a great verse to define the gospel message. And it says that Paul was explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, to suffer and to rise from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. That's the three essential elements of the gospel right there, my friends, that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, that he died on the cross for our sins and he rose again to offer us new and eternal life. And when he says that here in Thessalonica, what we're gonna see in these three cities is three different responses to hearing the word of the Lord. And the response here in Thessalonica, division. That's the key word for this city division because some of them were persuaded. They joined Paul and Silas, a great many of the devout Greeks, not a few of the leading women of the city, but the Jews were jealous and they set the city in an uproar. They formed a mob and so there's division. There are those who hear the word and they're persuaded to believe in the gospel of Jesus and the Jews, they're jealous that people are believing in Jesus and they start opposition, persecution, and eventually they're running Paul out of town. So when the gospel goes out, there are always gonna be both positive and negative responses. Jesus promised this. He even said that there would be a sword in our own families where even families would have different responses, where some would leave everything to follow Jesus and others would deny that Jesus is the Christ and actually rise up against him and his followers. So what we can expect as we go into all the cities around here, bringing the gospel, the word of the Lord, as it sounds forth, we can expect there to be both great times and hard times. It will be the best of times and the worst of times, sometimes at the same time. That's what it's gonna be like to spread the word of the Lord. But don't be discouraged by the division and by the persecution that rises up because go read 1 Thessalonians. Go read 1 Thessalonians 1. That's what we started preaching through. And there is a strong church, even though Paul is in Thessalonica for a short time preaching the gospel, a really strong church. In fact, he has nothing bad to say about that church. He loves them like a family. Even in divided times, the church can grow strong through the gospel of Jesus. That's what happens in Thessalonica. So the first response we see to the word, division. And now we're on to city number two. Are we coming to where you live? What, you looking at my shirt? We got a lot of videos to make. Team 52, we're going through the whole New Testament. Pound it. Welcome to city number two, Stanton. 
California. That's right, I'm here at In-N-Out Burger, right in front of Rodeo 39, representing Stanton. I want everybody from Stanton. Will you leave a comment? Represent and let us know because I remember when I gave my friend Bailey Adling, shout out to Bailey, everybody. I gave him a ride home from Compass Bible Church in Aliso Viejo. It took us like 50 minutes to get up here to Stanton. That's when I knew we needed to plant a church in North Orange County. And so I'm eating some In-N-Out Burger and I am getting into the meat and cheese of Acts 17. And that takes us to our second city, Berea. And it flat out says that the Jews in Berea were more noble than the ones in Thessalonica. Why? Because they wanted to receive the word and they wanted to compare it to the scripture. It says here, this is verse 11, Acts 17, verse 11. These Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. This is so important that we learn from the Bereans because they were ready to hear the word. They were doing it daily. That sounds like you here on Scripture of the Day. Thank you so much for being with us. But at the same time, they're comparing it to the Scriptures. They're examining the Scriptures to see if it's so. I can tell from eight years of preaching here in North Orange County that people are often comparing my sermons to something else other than the Bible. I can tell sometimes they're comparing it to their own thoughts or experiences. They're comparing it to something they heard someone else say, maybe at another church or another ministry. But the goal in preaching the word is to explain it from the text. That's expository preaching. We're explaining what the text says as we go through a book of the Bible. And you can decide if it's a good sermon or not by examining the scriptures to see if it is so. So this is how we all need to learn how to receive the word. We should receive it eagerly, we should receive it daily, and we should make sure that what we're hearing from other people is actually what the scripture says. When you hear me preach a sermon, anybody at our church, when they're preaching or any place you go and hear a word, make sure it's actually the word. Compare the points, the notes, the outline, back to the actual text of scripture. That's what the Bereans do, and they are referred to as noble. We wanna be noble at Compass HB. We wanna hear the Bible the right way, and so we need to examine the scripture to see if it is so. Stanton, that's where we're at, and what we need to make sure we're doing is standing on the actual word of God, not our own opinions, but what scripture actually says. So let's be Bereans and let's go to city number three. Let's go right now, right now. Let's go, where are we going? Oh, oh, I yeah. gotta finish my burger. We can't, we can't leave yet. Hold on. Mm. And our third city is Cypress, that's right. I'm coming to you from the park right behind Cypress High School. Shout out to my friend Chris Johnson teaching there right now. And you can take the Valley View Express all the way down to us at Compass HB. And we got a bunch of people up here in Cypress driving on down to church. An honorable mention to everybody in Garden Grove taking Valley View down to church. I bet some of you here in Cypress, you can get to church as fast as people who live in South Huntington Beach because of your access right down Valley View to Compass HB. And so welcome to Cypress. Leave a comment if you're from Cypress or honorable mention. Garden Grove, Double G, that's where uh, my mom grew up, everybody. Much respect to Garden Grove. And I wanna talk about our third city that Paul goes to in Acts 17, which is Athens, a famous city, uh, the, the center of Greek culture. And so this is different because he's not going to the synagogue to speak to the Jews in the city, but it says here in Acts 17, look with me at verses 19 and 21, because it talks about how they love to hear something new. And it says in, in verse 19, they brought him to the Areopagus saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. 
And then it says in verse 21, kind of Luke's commentary here, now all the Athenians and foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. And there's definitely that attitude that people have in response to the word, where they just wanna learn new information. They just wanna learn more. And it's great to grow in our knowledge of the scripture, especially we wanna grow in our knowledge of who God is and, and who Jesus is. But this is more just like, tell me something new. Tell me something interesting. This reminds me in 2 Timothy chapter four, where we're told to preach the word but some people won't want to hear the word. They won't want to be reproved or rebuked or exhorted because they don't want to find out if they're doing something they already know. They want their ears scratched with something very interesting to hear something new. And so be careful when we come to our scripture of the day, when you come to hear a sermon, are you just like, I hope I hear a good story today. I hope I hear something that makes me laugh. I hope I hear something interesting I don't know before. Or do you want to hear the word, even if you've heard it before and you want to take it to heart and make sure that you are a doer of the word, even if it slaps you in the face and reproves you and rebukes you or exhorts you. Because some people, it says, they're no longer going to put up with sound teaching, but they're going to wander off into myths. And it's just a sad commentary that maybe even a lot of us at church know more about our favorite movie series than we do about our favorite book of the Bible. It's a sad, sad commentary that more people have spent hours watching movies and TV shows than they have studying God's word because they like to hear stories, myths, and so you get that sense here in Athens, and Paul, he, he gives an introduction to the gospel. He starts with their unknown God, and he brings them to the God who commanded all people everywhere to repent, and he appointed a man who's gonna judge the world, a man that he raised from the dead, and that's where some mock, some don't wanna hear it anymore, some believe. But in Athens, we see they weren't like the noble Bereans taking it back to the scripture. They were like, tell me something new. So Acts 17, one chapter, three cities, three different responses to the word of God. Division in Thessalonica, people receiving the word and comparing it to the scripture in Berea, the noble way to go. And then here in Athens, tell me something new. Tell me a story. Entertain me. Get me thinking about something that's interesting to me, not necessarily preaching the word in season and out of season. So I hope you've got the ears to hear. I hope you're ready to keep on reading. And we're going to cruise on down Valley View like so many of you do. We're going to go back to Compass HB. And Lord willing, I hope you enjoyed our, our three cities in one video. Leave a comment and let me know about the city you live in and do they need to hear the word where you live? Because I think we've got a lot of work to do to be witnesses in these cities. And Lord willing, I'm going to see you for more here on Scripture of the Day. Thank you.